So I like to open up the intro. This one a little different. Oh yeah. The pre-intro. All right. All right. Just telling people thank you. I don't know how often we thank everybody for just subscribing, but just want to send a special thank you. We're over thirteen thousand subscribers. Um, come to think, beginning of this year we were at like twenty eight hundred. So everybody Crazy. that's like subscribed and listened to us, we really, really appreciate you. We're sorry, we're extremely busy, so we don't get to answer all the comments and things that people leave us, but we really do appreciate you, and we thank you so much. Yes, guys, thanks. And you guys do an amazing job of like sharing and posting and just supporting all social media, all the stuff that you guys post on your stories and whatnot. So awesome, thank you so much. Thank you. You love me like it. You love me like no. You love me like oh, 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 oh. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Drake and Bree, and you're watching Worth the Wait. Today, we are talking about... What's the topic, Bree? What's the first part? <laughs> I, I asked you because I forgot. Oh! Okay, can I do my thing? Yeah, go ahead. You better check yourself or you wreck yourself. You better check yourself. That's what's called. <laughs> the importance of working on yourself in a relationship. Woo! Don't I know a lot about that? Mm. So, we'll start with your not to haves. Okay. So, this is what I want you to understand. In a relationship, your not to haves coming together. Your two holes growing together. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say that again. Your not to haves coming together. Your two holes growing together. I am Groot. <laughs> so, um, I say that to say is that if you think of like yourself as a seed, and throughout your life you're continu continuing to nourish that seed, giving it the things that it needs to continue to grow, um, and you have to continue. If you know anything about gardening, if you have a seed, you have to continue to garden it and nurture it and make sure it's in the right environment but it's like a daily thing you have to continue to work at it you can't do it for three months and then leave it for three months because it's going to end up dying no matter how good the first three months were you have to continue to work on it and i think in when it comes to a relationship if we're still using the seed or plant analogy people think that you now have one plant that you're growing together so when the actuality is, it's still two different plants, but now you're kind of in the same garden. So if you don't take care of yourself and weeds start growing out of your little plant, that can start to affect the plant that's next to you. So in order for you both to flourish in the same garden, you both have to continue to keep up your seed, your plant, um, in order for you both to succeed in that area. So you have any thoughts on that as far as this together? Um, hmm. Okay, so my, my thought is, okay, so two, mm, perfect, okay. So, use us as an example. Um, we were definitely two holes, meaning that we both were, were filled. It was to the point where like, we didn't need one another. We wanted each other and we thought we made sense for what we both wanted individually so that we could grow together. Um, so many people get that confused with thinking that when we got together, I was who I am now. I'm not the same person, neither is he. Um, we grew through things and being whole and like being who you ultimately should be are two different things. Being whole just means that you are filled and that you know that there's things that you wanna work on and things that um, will ultimately make you better and you want to work on those. Being in a space where like you're not ready for a relationship means that there's a, a whole thing, a whole plethora of things that you need to work on before you should actually get in a relationship because you are still not filled. You're not whole. You're not ready to hop in something with someone. And I think that it's okay to be that and, and to find someone who is also that if you guys are going to be able to be able to successfully grow 
within the relationship and work on those things but naturally that doesn't really happen because if you haven't fixed those things on your own then how can you help someone else fix it so it's kind of a thing where if two broken people and broken just means like people that haven't healed from their past or they don't know how to effectively communicate or they've never been in a healthy relationship or have no one to help them maneuver in something to be what it should be then you are put in a situation where where you say it's this and he says it's that and then it's this back and forth thing and neither of you really know what you're talking about or doing and it just becomes a hot mess so it's two completely broken or half people that are trying to create something that's whole when they should already be whole and trying to grow does that make sense yeah i think for me it was my relationship with god that kind of made me whole mm -hmm. um, and i think the same with Bree because ultimately when we came to each other she was in her singleness and prepared to be in that like yeah. if you're one of those people who feel like oh i just can't be alone then that's a dangerous territory to be in mm -hmm. um so for me you know i was in my singleness i had made my decision to wait separately from her she had made her decision to wait separately from me so we were coming as two whole individuals but as you can see from where we are where we were where we are now we didn't have a business together when we first met this youtube like the things that we're growing and creating together we're enhancing each other's lives but we didn't complete each other mm -hmm. we were already complete before we met so that's important to understand um as you move forward with understanding like how to make how to work on yourself when you're in a relationship yeah um so next self accountability you can scoot up a little bit. You moved where you were. Yeah. Come on, man. All right. Self accountability. So I guess I'll speak on this first. Okay. Um, one thing, and this is something that I've noticed. I think Brie noticed as well is that a lot of times in your relationship. You know, if you're in a good, healthy relationship, you still have issues, you still have problems. But a lot of things that you feel like is your partner's fault, a lot of times it can fall on you and the way that you handle things and the way that you evaluate things. I know, especially as a man, um, I take that to heart to end our relationship, no matter what Bree's going through or what, you know, she's saying is my fault or her fault. I always look at it and say, like, what could I be doing better to help this situation or how am I hindering her? Because there's a lot of things that Brie was going through and I felt like, okay, this is how she should react. But the things that I was saying and doing were actually um, counterproductive. They weren't helping her. They were kind of making the issue a little bit worse. I was doing the best that I thought I could, but I realized that it was me that was, even though she had a problem, that it was me that was continuing to foster that problem or to make it worse versus it being her. What would you say about that? This like understanding yourself, like holding yourself accountable in situations. Um, one thing that I struggled with in getting in a relationship with him because he was so much better at like the communication aspect and um, the accountability aspect is we don't ever as people we don't want to be wrong right we don't want to be a mean person we don't want to be the reason why something's not working out and so it's easier to play the blame game and be like oh well i'm only this way because you x y and z you know um so i think like at dinner the other day um i was able to express some reasons some things of like why i feel like i've created the exact things that i complain about um and it was hard because i'm like i don't want to say this obviously it's like it's kind of embarrassing to be like yeah that's me I'm the, I'm the problem um it also takes a lot to really do self-reflection so many people think that calling up your friend and explaining the story is you reflecting on the situation or you you seeing if you're wrong at the end of the day that is like the worst way to deal with anything and to really reflect it's about looking at the situation and looking at it fully like full circle um to see where you um are maybe falling short and it's not a bad thing like if i come to dre or when i did come to dre and tell him like you know i think that the reason why x y and z has been like this is because for me looking at my past and blah blah, blah and saying all of that 
his reassurance to me after of just being like, that's dope basically that you took the time to like figure that out. And that like, now that we know that it makes more sense and we can work on it easier without so much um, pressure or feeling like we're kind of tiptoeing around the situation. And so um, I think that the accountability is super important because we have to learn to just like, have the humility enough to say like, I'm not doing X, Y, and Z, and I'm also not doing a good job of, of helping with the situation and knowing that it's not just you, um, or it's all of me, and this is what I need from you to help me do X, Y, and Z. So I would just say that that's the thing, and if you're in a relationship with someone who you can't effectively communicate with, it would never be a thing anyways, because how would you, if you can't say simple things, how are you gonna really sit down in front of someone and humble yourself enough to say like, hey, I think I'm, you know, going about X, Y, and Z wrong, or I need you to help me do X, Y, and Z. So as long as you guys have healthy communication, having the self accountability is easy because it's just having open communication, like real open communication. Yeah, a coach that I had once told me, he said, I'll never forget it. He said, a man that doesn't know what he doesn't know is a dangerous man. That it's okay not to know something um, you don't really do harm that way. If somebody says, hey, Dre, can you fix the engine in my charger? I'll be like, no. Don't know how. <laughs> don't know how. No harm, no foul. But if the same person came to me and I'm like, yeah, I know how to do that. Just because I want the money and I don't know what I'm doing, then I do more damage than help. Um, and I feel like that's the same with self-accountability is that you have, as Bree said, you have to be honest with yourself and say, you know what, like, I need to take a firm look and evaluation of my actions and things like that and realize that there are some things I have been doing wrong. There are some things I don't really know that much about. Even there are some things about myself that I still need to explore, that I'm still learning about. When you start to have that self -account accountability and you're honest with yourself, then it makes it easy to, to address those problems. Because I think the first thing in having self-accountability and changing those things is first addressing that they exist. Because mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of people like act like their problems aren't there. Um, even when Bree and I first started dating, I remember the first thing she told me, she was like, oh yeah, my dad wasn't in my life, but that didn't affect me at all. And it's like, I don't know yeah. much about much, but how did that not affect you at all? Yeah. And the thing is that she just didn't, acknowledge it but once she acknowledged it then she was able to kind of start unpacking it a little bit more and seeing you know how it may have affected her life and the things that you know she experienced as an adult so i think that's the biggest thing with self-evaluation or self-accountability is just being honest with yourself so for the last topic i know this is something that brie talks about with women a lot um and talks to people just a lot about in general and that's just building self-esteem and self-love. With this, right, looking at point two that we were just talking about as far as when, um, when you know like, hey, these are things that I have to work on, this plays a perfect role in it because if you are, if you allow yourself to become the victim, you could end up changing things and doing things that you have no business doing and shouldn't have to do. Um, for example, like if your self-esteem and self-love is low and you don't really know your value, you don't really know your worth, you will end up changing things that you really morally stand by to to fit and match this person because of what they're saying or if you get to the point where you really feel that you're the problem you could start changing things that just shouldn't be changed and so the, again fine line of between like i know that i need to humble myself to make changes but i also need to be able to discern in between what changes actually need to be made um because it's a it's a relationship it's not what do i do just to make this person happy especially in the beginning stages because they're in that interview phase um but with the building self-love and like self-esteem it really takes being alone because if you bounce from person to person you are always being you're looking for validation from someone all the time and if that validation is not coming from god alone or yourself and it becomes a thing of you need it from other people then you just will never be able to see your real worth and like to be able to be in a relationship and make decisions based on your worth and your value does that make sense yeah it does. okay 
Um, so I think that the pro I get this question a lot. How do I work on myself? How do I build my confidence? How do I like regain my self love and, and build my self esteem? At the end of the day, the answer is time. Time and God. Putting all your energy into looking at who you are as a person, figuring out the things you like about yourself, the things you don't like about yourself, the things you want to work on to make yourself better, and really allowing yourself to just fall in love with you. And once you're happy with that, once you're in love, and, and it, it doesn't matter if you have a man or not, or a girl or not, that's when you're going to truly find the person that will make sense for you. Because it can't be someone that you're going after and pleasing and looking for validation that you're worthy because it, that just that's not a thing i would say also i want to give everybody this challenge and then i have a question for brie too i want to challenge you that if you're in a committed relationship you feel like you're in a good relationship you love the person they love you for the issues that you guys have i would say i challenge you to instead of looking at what they're doing wrong look at yourself and Think about how you what you could do to make the situation better. Because ultimately, if somebody loves you, love should be the ultimate accountability partner for that person. So say for instance, if Bree is going through something or she's arguing back at me, and I feel like she has part of the blame for the reason that wherever we're arguing about, what I'll do is I need to fix myself. And because she loves me, I'm going to trust that she's going to work on it too and try to figure out a, a thing to make it make sense for both of us. So she's trusting me because she knows I love her. I'm trusting her because I know she loves me. So I just challenge you guys, if you're in that type of relationship, just whatever issue you guys are going through, instead of blaming that other person or pointing the finger at that other person or, or arguing with them about what they should or shouldn't be doing, try to work on yourself and say, what could I do? to help and make this situation better. And then trust that because they love you that they're gonna work on that too. So it's just a challenge. And if that's not actually happening, that probably means that neither of you actually know what love is or the relationship hasn't even gotten to a point where, where love is the focus or that you guys are got in a relationship for something else other than love in the first place. So it's physical, it's convenient, it's easy you look good, whatever that reason is. So look at your reasons. If this is not happening, it's probably because that's not the relationship for you. Yeah. So my question that I have for Brie, what up? and I can only ask this because I know her, but I feel like this will help a lot of people out um, who are dealing with this. So how do you, when it comes to the building self-esteem and building self-love and self-confidence, how do you identify or make that adjustment to where one point of your life you feel like something wasn't a problem and then at another point it just like became a problem so like how do you identify what made that change like how to work through that because i know through our relationship that you have certain things that you weren't as like self-conscious about but then when it hit a certain point then you became more self-conscious about it then you had to kind of work through that you would so, say like stuff like cussing or not spending my money wisely or not like or even like the things that even like we said earlier on in our relationship or before you met me like these things drinking. weren't things that you had like whether it was like weight or things like that to where there weren't issues that you really harped on before but then like once we got in a relationship you felt like you harped on those things a lot more and trying to identify like, all right, why was I not as worried about it or self-conscious about it before? Oh, but okay, then, yeah. I was confused. So basically it was, it's a thing of like having your standards and like really challenging yourself to be the best person you could be. So before um, I was worried about more like materialistic things and like the, the things that made me feel like I was like the catch in my other relationships or in my situation. So like if I was dating somebody, there weren't things that really bothered me. I felt very confident as a person because I felt like I was almost above them. I was like, uh, like I have this going on and I'm pretty and I'm smart and I'm fun and I'm all of these things. And so there weren't a lot of things that I felt like I had to work on. I always looked at the other person like, yeah, you need to get together. You need to work on X, Y, and Z. And it kind of made me feel good to be like, I'm not the one with all the problems. 
Um, getting in a relationship with Dre, the huge difference was the people that I was dating versus him. Two different ballparks, probably wouldn't be in the same room ever. The thing with me was I was dating these types of people because in myself, I wasn't, I wasn't putting myself up to a standard that God says we should be. So the things that I was doing, the ways that I was thinking and just overall who I was as a person, it wasn't up to a certain standard. So I was putting myself above other people because I was dealing with other people who didn't have any standards or, or accountability to, to God basically either. And so the types of people that they were was not Dre. When we got in a relationship and I was like, oh wow, like he's such a nice person. He's so honest. He's so God fearing. He's doing all these things. And I saw that I see daily the work that he puts in himself to be the best him. So by nature, it makes my standards of myself go up higher because if, if he's bringing that to the business, to the business, <laughs> if he's bringing all that to the partnership and to the relationship, I look at myself like, well, what am I bringing? And I want to make sure that we're we're a team and that we we don't you know say and do things differently. And so even for simple stuff like cussing is something that I'm like, that is not cute. I don't like get the things I say when I'm randomly you know in a moment of something with the way he looks at me like oh, that wasn't very nice or like that wasn't cool holds me accountable and makes me want better for myself and then it makes me look at like you know that this person is just so um great that it makes me see all my flaws in myself not in a way to where i feel less than or i don't feel worthy of him but in a space where it's like i know i can do better does that make sense mm -hmm. So when you trade your standards, when you really understand what you're worthy of having and what you're capable of being as a person, then you hold yourself to a whole different level that by nature, you you won't even associate yourself with the same types of behaviors, things, or people as you did in the past. Good answer. Thanks. And I would say for a partner who is with someone who you know is dealing with like maybe self-esteem, or self-love like struggles uh, just making sure that you support them that it won't be an overnight thing with yeah. them overcoming that um, and then also understand where you can help them and where they may need to see outside help because you know somebody say somebody feeling uncomfortable about their weight or their skin or their you know I don't know eyebrow whatever like a lot of those things Man, don't, I hate my eyebrows. But a lot of those <laughs> things don't aren't really about that physical trait. It's like Other some things. things that happen or that, you know, make them insecure about that particular, you know, body part of that particular it, it, it's something deeper a lot of times that goes into that versus just the physical thing that they're talking about. Um, so just be patient with them. And I had to learn to do that. And, you know, I'm continuing to learn how to do that. Um, just being patient and understanding, continue to encourage and also celebrate the small victories. That's something that I had to learn too, that although it may not seem like a big deal to you, that if there's something that somebody is trying, something that someone is trying to overcome or they're trying to be better or they're trying to gain confidence, make sure you celebrate those small, like things that seem insignificant, but it's a big step for them. It's important for them. It's like when um, the other day and I said, oh, poop or oh, poopy or oh, crap or something. Jared's like, look at you. Good job. And I was like, why? And he was like, you didn't say shit. <laughs> so then you do curse. I'm, but it was an example. <laughs> she should have said the S word. I'm still working on it. <laughs> but anyway, so that's just our advice on um, just working on the importance of yourself. Like I said, we, again, a relationship isn't two halves coming together, it's two holes growing together. So um, in your relationship, you need to make sure that you work on yourself, both sides need to continue to work on yourself um, so that overall you can have a great relationship and continue to grow together in the right way. Yes. Now, with that being said, Dre, I have one question for you. Yes. Will you accept this rose? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for watching. Um, make sure you guys follow us on Instagram at Brianna Pante, at It's, it's Dre Smith, Smith, and at Worth The Weight. As always, we love you. Say goodbye, Rose. Do, 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 do.